And what is up guys, Technicals Tinkers here today. A little bit different of a day because I believe the Orange Storm Giga is being delivered today. I don't know, it could be something else that I ordered a long time ago and I forgot about, but something on a lift gate, on a pallet is coming today between 10 and two. And that window starts in about 40 minutes. So we're gonna get ready. Anyone else pretend they use the force when they're opening their driveway security gates? Just me. And I was able to talk the wife into giving me the entirety of the garage so I could set this thing up. Uh, so she'll have to go a day getting into a slightly cooler car, but we all make sacrifices. So what am I working on today? Because I imagine that when the Giga gets here, it's going to eat up a lot of my time. Maybe I'll do a time lapse or something like that, but going back and forth between video and whatnot, I don't want to demonstrate too much of my ignorance with the Giga. So I'm probably going to try to set up as much as I can without that, maybe blurb it along the way, but some other things to take note of. So our character model that we've been working on again, I don't see a lot of whole profit potential in these, but you know, as a interest item in the stores or perhaps just a print one really good example, put it on the Etsy, you know, maybe because uh, you know, the idea being is like, you know, if I can just get the settings right, I can stamp one out because they take a long time to print, but there's not a lot of post-production with these models. Uh, you just pop them off, pop off the supports, throw it in a box, and it's good to go. Um, if people wanna buy them, great, cool. Uh, we're working on that anyway. We're doing a big, big version because I was like, you know what? Well, I'm gonna print these little small versions. Just go ahead and print the big one. This print, no adaptive layer height, four days. Because <laughs> it's 250 millimeters high. Doesn't even have that much complexity or color, but hey, it is what it is. If you saw yesterday's video, I was having trouble with the lifting on the sharp overhangs and someone was saying cooling. And I thought, you know what? I got these panels on here. Let's just open it up, let the air kind of flow in and out and see if that makes a difference. I'll be able to tell pretty early in the print so I can stop it if it gets too far. Up here on Cobra 1 and 2, we have the Colt Python doing some sections of that, and that's kind of like the bulk of this first part of the video. If you've been, because if you've been following along, you know the Colt Python, this is like the example, the made example. I'll probably do a darker color on the next one, but it's quite large. It is longer than the Glocks. It's real big. And because it's big, there's no way I'm able to ship it without it going into oversized, which means that it's gonna cost like a minimum of like 200 and some odd dollars just to ship the thing. And that means I would have to charge a lot more and I'll probably not sell as many. So my, what I've been working on for the past like week and a half now is trying to find a way to make that Colt Python into two parts, split it, ship it into two parts, but make it as absolutely easy to fit together as possible. That is because it's my belief that if someone is ordering this thing or ordering it as an art print, um, I shouldn't expect too much from them to like piece it all together because they're paying a lot of money for it. Uh, it should be it, it should be one unit, but unfortunately I'm not gonna be able to do that. I do have to split it. So if you've been following along the series, you know that I was considering magnets, but I kind of held off on that. And then the most recent iteration, I was using um, heat set inserts and bolts and trying to fit it in to where I take basically the barrel and basically the rest of the gun and have them come together and then bolts go in opposite ways to pull it together. A lot of good suggestions coming in on how to you know accomplish that but ultimately after the the um, immense failure yesterday of you know not being able to get those inserts in it kind of you know became very clear to me that there's just no way I'm going to be able to do this repeatedly and that being to heat to set those inserts in place. Now I could have a big thick amount of plastic on the bottom or the top that the insert can sit and nestle in very nicely, but just one or two degrees of pitch the wrong way uh, when the bolt comes in, if say the insert is like, we're gonna do this, we're, we're doing it boys, we're doing this illustration, okay? I could use a real bolt, I could use a real uh, heat set insert, but I'm gonna use my hand just like this. So it's supposed to go in like this, but if this is, you know, just a little bit off and this comes in at the only angle it can, it's going to add an unnecessary amount of stress, of torsion. And that is, you know, if people are tightening it down and it gets tighter and tighter, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about failure. And so I don't want that to happen. Once these models go out the door, I want zero, zero issues whatsoever because, you know, when it comes to business, you the only, ver you know, post sales uh, contact you want from a customer is a glowing review and, a, and another sale. That's the only thing that you want. You don't want problems. You don't want to have to fix things. So kind of going back to the drawing board a little bit. I was thinking about magnets too. Now these are about an inch and a quarter 
N52 neodymium magnets. So they are strong. They're pretty thin, but when you put them together, you get kind of a compounding effect. My thinking being is that if I insert these inside each side of the model, that when it comes together, that force, you know, you put them in various places, you know, you get thicker ones, put it on the model and it will hold it together. Now these are strong, but that model is long. And so it's a lot of added force from, from outside. And again, if someone's swinging it around, there's nothing actually fastening it together other than magnetism and how does that, how do magnets even work? So again, I, I will explore magnets again as like, say maybe like a final option. Place I arrived is the place that I kind of didn't want to go, but it makes the most sense. And I don't think it's going to be that big of a, uh, of a problem for the customer. And that is glue. And so what I've done is I'm printing these sections. Now, what I did was I took it out here and just made a cat, uh, a hole in each side and then I'll send it with a dowel and I'll probably go ahead and attach the dowels on the inside of uh, one part. I didn't make them into the part here because if I need to adjust the dowel, I don't wanna adjust the big model, I'd rather adjust just the dowel. And so each side has a hole, put the dowels in. When Mr. Customer gets his model, all he has to do is slide it on and it'll be a little instruction sheet. Put just a, do a dollop of glue here, dollop of glue there, push it together, wait 10 seconds and you're good to go. And so again, I didn't wanna do that because glue can be finicky, but what I can do is take the solution that is undesirable and kind of eliminate some of the uncertainty with it. So that being, you know, two dowels, that way it's, he doesn't have to like line it up on an axial plane. It just slides in and you're good to go. And it's affixed because even though glue is not a mechanical fastener, it does a pretty good job holding shit together. And if I've got a dowel in each side, then that prevents it from you know bending and cracking because it's being held on so many different planes. So that's the direction I'm going with the Colt Python. Hopefully it works out. It still allows me to put the cylinder in place, the cylinder, not the drum, uh, in place and still have it spin. So it's checking a lot of boxes and I'm optimistic about it because the other stuff was going nowhere fast. These big guns and like the atomic bombs and things like that, you know, the big D20 cubes, they all, they all kind of speak to, to a similar sort of like, not revelation, but something I kind of always like kind of felt uh, with this 3D print thing is, you know, you have functional prints and art prints. And I know I, I focus heavily on the art prints and that's really from lack of anything else. And so what I've been looking at, I've been constantly looking, I'm always looking for functional prints or things that, you know, are components of larger structures, things that may have uh, appeal to other people. And so recently I downloaded, I already threw it away because I was like, this is ridiculous. It's like a ball with a bunch of holes in it and you put dowels in it and you can build like forts. It's for kids. And so I saw that on Etsy and I was like, that's an easy enough thing to do. I just get a bunch of dowels and a, print a bunch of those balls and the people on Etsy were selling it, the kit for like $90 and it said like four sold in the past 24 hours. And I'm like, you know, that's pretty good sales for how simple it is. And so I do go down the list of testing. The first place, what's the first thing you do? You go to Amazon and see if there's an analog there. And of course there is. And of course it's like a third of the price. Uh, it's mass produced. Why people are buying it on Etsy, I have no idea because the stuff on Amazon looks equally as quality and you know i don't have kids but kids toys are generally pretty like cheap and not great quality because they're going to destroy it anyway or quit playing with it so i get that but it kind of leads back to the sort of revelation is like with 3d printing you really got to have something specific that you can produce in mass quantities that isn't going to be taken over by china by amazon by a mass manufacturer because if it's got that wide of an appeal then China's gonna start stamping it out. Uh, that's why the crypto mining stuff is actually really ideal, I think, for 3D printing, because like for instance, these shrouds, they go on a specific crypto miner, but in the world of crypto mining, uh, things change quickly. And so this particular miner, it only is good for a few months and then a new miner comes out. And so you have to make a new shroud for it. So there's no real benefit to these factories tooling up and manufacturing shrouds to fit those crypto miners. And so it's a perfect opportunity for 3D printing. The problem is with crypto mining, it's not so great right now. And so you have to kind of wait around for it and be Johnny on it and hope that you're able to make something for it. Something to the point where people actually buy it because people crypto mining are making money. And so it's like an easy justification for them to buy a thing 
because uh, they're gonna make more money if they do. And so I'm constantly on the lookout for things like that um, just as much as I can. So to anyone watching, it's like, you know, you're just kind of focusing on these stupid giant guns and sex cyborgs and things like that. I told my wife the other day, I'm, I'm gonna print a giant cigarette. And I'm like, what am I doing with my life? Anyway, that's sort of where I am with that. Am I gonna be able to scale that up? Maybe, it's just part of the process. It's just part about finding out what it is and it's through doing all this dumb stuff uh, that maybe something springs up. So this is the part in the video where I'll kick it over to either my afternoon self when the Giga gets here, assuming it gets here, or my morning self to see how it all turned out. So no Giga yet. One o'clock, they got one hour left. I hate waiting for things. I can't, I feel like I can't, anybody else, they, I can't do anything. I can't get into anything because I'm waiting for this delivery. Because if I start doing something and the delivery shows up, I'll have to stop doing what I'm doing and my brain only has one direct, it's a one lane road. I can't, I don't know, is anyone else like that or am I just super duper neurotic? Anyway, checking in while I'm sitting in here with my thumb up my ass, we got all four Cobras going on the Colt Python. So this is a, not like a final test, but I am, I am optimistic about this. Uh, so I've changed all the support settings around, changed the wall loops, changed the infill, uh, just trying to dial it in for like, you know, something that I'm not going to have to tinker with in the future. So it's like if I get some, someone buys one of them, I can just snap out the next one. No issue. So these, I think uh, because I dialed everything down, I think the longest one is only taking about 18 hours. And I think once I'm done with this Colt Python, I might reattempt putting 0.6 millimeter or 0.8 millimeter nozzles. I know, right? A lot of people are saying like, oh my God, you're running 0.4s for these giant prints. I am because of the Fidelity and because when I tried putting in the 0.8, my volumetric flow wasn't right and I had like more tests coming in so I just swapped it back and I haven't reattempted it since. Uh, but I really need to find out what those actual settings are to make a 0.6 or a 0.8 really work and I presume it you know, has to do more so with volumetric flow, dialing up the heat, things like that. And so I'll probably take a look at uh, you know, when the Giga, if, assuming it's even the Giga coming today, uh, what those settings are and maybe kind of adapt that or look around because it doesn't seem like a lot of people put the larger nozzles on their Cobra 2 Maxes, but it remains to be seen. So I'm going to sit around here and just wait probably another couple, I don't know, I hate waiting for stuff. Uh, but I do have to receive it, I have to get it in here. Uh, hopefully these will work out, but now for real, I'm going to kick it over to my future self tomorrow morning to see how it all worked out and if a Giga shows up at my door. And it is the next morning, so let's check in on things and see how they worked out. So as of yesterday, last we spoke, we were doing parts for the Colt Python, doing the character model, keeping it light, keeping it fresh, trying to make some room for the Orange Storm Giga. Over here on the character model, certainly much larger and the issue that we were encountering previously with the overhangs kind of furling up uh, I just took the panels off the side to help cooling and that seems to have done the trick um, some people were saying slow it down I was reading some comments saying slow down the bridging speed and slow down the um, the threshold of the speed on certain overhangs so I did all of that and increased the cooling and it seems to be coming out just fine the top layer is still a little terracy uh, but that's because I did not do adaptive layer height because it would have made the print take like six days or something like that. So this is looking pretty good. On the Colt Python parts, got the middle section of the barrel here. Oh, and there's the holes. They just have supports on the inside, so I got to pull those out. Uh, so eager to test that out. Over here, unfortunately, on the middle section, the main center section, we did have a failure and it's right underneath the hammer. And I think it's because I use normal supports. Maybe this would benefit from organics because of the complexity and there's curves and stuff. And I was like, I was thinking about that, but I thought, you know, maybe the normal supports, you know, because they, they just have been performing so well, um, they'll hold up, but unfortunately it did fail. And so now I gotta look around and find out where that support ran off to. Here's a piece of it and I guess that's just it trying to extrude into thin air. So we're gonna have to reset and retry on that one. Down here on the front section of the barrel, looking crispy clean. No supports on this guy. Top surface looking good, barrel looking good. And I think maybe I was a little trigger happy. 
I think maybe I forgot to adjust the infill settings on the handle. And of course it's the largest section. Um, that doesn't quite look like 5% gyroid infill to me. It looks a little heavier than 5%. Or maybe it is in just, just the way that gyroid looks, but uh, yeah, that's pretty wild, man. Uh, so I'll, I'll need to make sure that it, at least it's gonna be solid. Let no one say that it won't be a very, very solid piece and our dowel holes over here. Oh yeah, one more thing. So this is it, Mad Lads. You know, you've seen the reviews and uh, I heard it came in two boxes. I heard it was big, uh, but this is real big. Let's get a technicals in here for scale. Print me like one of your French girls. I'm 6'6", 315 pounds too. So that's, you know, obviously a big print. I'm just kidding. Oh my God, not, some of you have zero sense of humor whatsoever. You're not 6'6", 315. Yeah, it's a joke, dude. Anyway, this is, uh, I have to check my chore list because I have chores that I do every day, but this is probably the name of the game for today. At a minimum, getting it unboxed and basic setup and put over here where it goes so my wife can come back in here. I'll still have plenty of room to operate, but uh, I'm kind of about to pass out because yesterday I bleached the floor in here just to kind of clean up since there was no car and the fumes are still quite heavy. So I was mixing bleach and uh, some like ammonia cleaner together and it, it cleaned up pretty good, but man, it's making me kind of lightheaded. Also a joke. Anyway, gonna be setting up the Orange Storm Giga today. Gonna try to uh, piece together some parts for the Colt Python on the interim because I wanna keep the machines running at least while I'm in here. I'll probably at a minimum get that center section restarted and reprinting here and just do it with organic support or tree supports. And then uh, what else? Soval's quiet, A1's quiet. So that is 100% the 3D update for today, largely working on the Orange Storm Giga. Get a lot of views, I've seen a lot of views come in for people who are yet unsubscribed to the channel but seem to be returning viewers. So be sure to subscribe to the channel, just helps me out because uh, if manufacturers and vendors see that I have a higher sub count, they'll send me more free stuff and I could do more giveaways and whatnot. And I'm and planning on another giveaway here very soon. So be sure to subscribe, be sure to like the video because it's a nice thing to do. And again, subscribe for more content like this. I'm The Technicals. See you next time.